The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 759 Meet the Competition The tournament organization, as it turned out, was on the surface outside of Grand Bell's central pit, which meant it was in the rain, and the storm showed no signs of abating. Bananas! Is it just me, or is this way more persistent than the Iron Ridge weather? Valet complained, rubbing the back of her shoulders and wincing from her lingering wounds. Feels like it's been raining forever! Only a day, actually, Amber remarked, not at all caring that her fur was plastered to her skin by the downpour. Granted, it was a very long day, but this just started last night. Maple trotted beside them, herself and Starlight contained in a single oversized Riverfall poncho, rain streaming off the slick material. Are you too sure you don't want one too? I have several more of these. Valet folded her ears. Yeah, there's no way that thing's gonna feel good when I'm all beat up. But I can take it. I'll just dry off and warm up later. And you know I'm happier when I'm soaked, Hammer chuckled. We're fine, Maple. Shinespark had no qualms about wearing one of the ponchos. Her horn lit sapphire for light beneath its large hood. So, all of Grand Bell's surface is used for crop production, she asked, glancing around at the scenery. Well-ordered groves of trees set in tended soil on either side of a curved stone road, and Valet was sure, if seen from above in the day, it would form some kind of pattern. In the distance, the aqueduct walls protected the fields from the plains' wind, and the mountain wall of the Eldenfold loomed like a black void in the distance. Yes, their guide said, wearing an expression that said he was paid exorbitant amounts of money not to be bothered by the rain. Grand Bell attempts to provide as much of its own food supply as feasible in this climate. The area inside the walls is entirely used for crop production, save for the parade grounds, which serve as our arena. And it looks like we're almost there, Valet observed, the road widening and coming to a gate. Their guide had a short discussion with the gate guards, after which they were permitted into the gatehouse and led down a short staircase inside. That led to a hallway, and suddenly they were in a long, well-lit room half covered in tables and paperwork and filled with talking ponies. Valet blinked, dripping, heads starting to turn at their arrival. It's you! A familiar wall of muscle called from the back, grinning an overeager smile. Hello, Star Power, a mustard yellow unicorn mare with an angular face and slim barrel greeted, floating over a stack of emergency linens. You need a towel, sugar cube? Or are you too cool for caring about the weather? Valet blinked, taking the towels. Uh, hi, have we met? Everyone who is anyone knows who you are, a griffin in chef's attire who looked vaguely familiar mused. Well met again, by the way. It was an interest being bested by you in battle. It's an honor, a pink mare whispered, wearing a sparkling medallion from the earlier ceremony. You're here to help us, right? Valet tilted ahead. Help? Why? What's going on? Hello, Admiral Valet, another voice declared, and the temperature in the room rose several degrees. The crowd parted, revealing a mare in a sleek metal suit, with flowing, luminous lines of coolant energy, several jet fans idling on her sides. Meltdown evenly met her eyes, and Vully winced. What's going on is that your shenanigans in Stormhof last night caused three of the tournament's top organizers to resign and flee to the countryside for fear of the Empire's instability. This is back to back with last month's devastation in this valley, and things have reached a point where this year's tournament won't continue unless those who care about it make an effort to save it. Valet's jaw dropped slightly. Wait! This thing could be cancelled? Yep, that's what they say, the unicorn who had offered towel said, leaning against a large barrel with the faintest hint of danger in her voice. So, what'll it be, hon? Think we can be friends? In the back, standing on his hind legs as always, Randorf nodded hopefully. Meltdown waited, impassive, and the rest of the room seemed to hold a breath. I mean, yeah, Valet furrowed a brow. I have no idea what it'll involve, but of 
course I want the tournament to go on. A collective sigh of relief swept through the room, and a momentary shadow disappeared from the atmosphere. Whew, that's a relief, the Tolomir sighed, wiping her brow and offering a huff. I'm Saffron Sunflower, best friend you ever did make. From Maple's back in the entrance, Starlight blinked. That name sounded like it belonged to a pony from an I am Pierre, in case I failed to be memorable, the chef Griffin greeted, extending a talon while Valet was hoof-pumping Saffron. You outdueled me and my friend quite significantly not two days ago. I am still feeling it sorely. Well, look who we have here, a new voice greeted, Diego shouldering his way out of the crowd. Valet! Hey, buddy! Ah! Oh, wow! Hey, guys! Valet turned in a circle from all the attention, trying not to spray anyone with her dripping mane. So, what actually are you all doing here? I assume everyone's a tournament fighter and stuff? Yes, we're all career fighters, the pink mare murmured. Some who are still in and some who aren't, but still care enough to try. Like me, Randorf added, shoving his way to the front and taking up the space of three ponies. Saffron nodded. A lot of passion and a lot of talent. Miss Meltdown here can take care of all the business making things official with Garshiva for us, but it's up to us to figure out how to schedule five fights in the time bracket of four, promote the whole thing, and keep a lid on the cheating so the half of us who aren't doing it for the love of competition don't make fools out of the rest of us. Valet rubbed the back of her neck, grinning sheepishly. Yeah, maybe I should read the rules on how things are supposed to go normally before I go getting too caught up in that. But I totally don't want the tournament to stop or anything. Pierre raised an eyebrow at Randorf. Pay up on a bet, money bags. I told you she didn't even realize two against one was illegal. Ah. Randorf drooped, tossing several golden coins. Diego beckoned Valet for the crowd to one of the bigger tables. So, the third round of the tournament starts with 256 fighters. From there, it's a straight bracket to the top, which means half of the fighters drop out every round for eight rounds until you have a champion. The first four fights are round three, and they're supposed to be in Stormhof. The last four are round four, and are usually held in the parade grounds we're sitting under right now. The first four are flexible, because you have a lot of creatures getting spared with golden regions, but those are much rarer to see used this close to the top. Valé frowned at the diagrams, careful not to drip on them as she continued toweling her domain. And we finished three of those? Or four? I read Grandpapa, got a pass from Senesei, fought two dudes at once? We finished free, Diego said, pointing at a long row of short trees. Here's the record so far. The problem is, if we want this to go as smoothly as possible, we have to use the battle time slots they were already counting on before all the organizers quit and we got kicked out of Stormhof. There are four of those intended to go from a pool of 16 challengers to one. But we're around behind, and counting everyone who got spared with a regent and hasn't had a rematch in the last round, we have to use that time to find a champion from among 37. 37? Well, he blinked hard. There were five dudes spared last match? If I'm mathing right, at least. Can't you kick people with your fingers too or something? Saffron nodded, coming up behind her. Oh, there's other uses for him, all right. But a good number of us who regularly make it up this far just do it because we enjoy the challenge. Don't let Wallace Watwang fool you about needing goals and determination to make it to the top. Maybe that's true for being the champ, but I just enjoy a good tussle. We spare each other a lot, the pink mare added, still not having given her name. You remember the fighters you get knocked out by, and sometimes we become good friends. Sorry to interrupt, but maybe we can help with this? Shinespark slipped up by Valet's side, pulling her hood back and glancing over the tournament structure sheets. I have a lot of experience with organizational work. Pierre's beak burst. Ah, the captain. It is a pleasure to meet you as well. And your friends? He gestured to the rest of Valet's entourage, where Amber was socializing and the guide had disappeared, and the rest looked unsure where to go. 
Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, and Sparky knows her stuff. Well, he nodded confidently. Saffron had been giving Shine Spark a strange look, and her ears suddenly wilted. Oh, I do remember you. You're that poor gal who got taken apart standing in for Miss Valet back in round two, aren't you? Shine Spark winced from the memory. That was me, yes. Though I recovered better than my armor. You still haven't gotten that thing put back together? Diego raised a concerned eyebrow. You should let me have a look at that sometime. I specialize in Magitech and arcane machinery. Saffron shook her head. I still can't believe that Grandpapa somehow got to borrow Yulia's sword to do that to you. He must have thought you all were a bigger threat and wanted to take you down a notch. Or maybe he was just being rude. Wait, you know Grandpapa? Well, he blinked in alarm. Bananas, I don't like that dude. Sadly, Randolph pouted. Well, you could say that, yes, Pierre mused. He has been around longer than any of us. We do not often talk. They do things differently in Jaya, where he is from, and he has his... Uniqueness. My muscle-bound friend is unamused with him after having him end last year's run early. Randorf sulked. Ah, uh, he's not so bad, Saffron countered. Grandpapa it is. At least, he usually isn't. He has some weird philosophy and always goes hard on Cerosians. Doesn't really like him being in the tournament, but he seems to try his best to look out for everyone, even if he's got some eccentricities. The pink mare turned her head down. If you want someone to complain about, Yulio is far worse. Sounds like someone's got a grudge. Valet raised an eyebrow, shine spark pouring over the table beside her. Fresh wounds, Pierre shrugged. She is out of the battle, courtesy of him from last match. Saffron bit her lip. Yulio's plenty nice outside of matches. Talks himself up and he has a bit of an ego, but who doesn't when you're this good? But then he plays dirtier than an unbathed pirate the moment you're alone in the ring. Don't know why he hasn't used that paralyzing sword of his yet. If you go up against him, best advice I have is to pack a set of earplugs and ring his head like a gong. It's real unsporting of him when so many of us just play to have fun. The upside of being knocked out by you is that we won't have to deal with him, Pierre sighed. The downside is we won't have the chance to teach him a lesson. And he has a sword, Starlight asked, waddling up beside a table. Is it black with a triangular hole in the hilt? Saffron's eyes went wide. Ah, aren't you the cutest thing? She looked up at Valet. She's, uh, with you? Valet grinned. Yeah, Starlight's cool. Her grin turned to a frown. You care about his sword, though? I've never even heard of this rando. This is his first year fighting, so neither have we, Pierre apologized. And that is his blade, yes. You are familiar with it? How long has he had it? Stolid asked, sounding curious. Mm, Saffron shrugged. Shucks, I don't know. I just hope he keeps not using it. I'm not a fan of getting messed up by that thing myself. Who knows if a hoof clap can even catch his blade? I saw it go right through you, Sugar Cube. She nodded at Shine Spark, who was too deeply absorbed in the tournament diagrams to notice. Yeah. Well, I chuckled, nudging Shine Spark's flank with her own wet one. This table big enough for you, Sparky? Shine Spark reddened, and her ears went down. I'm concentrating. Don't you dare. The others gave questioning looks, but Starlight quickly cleared her throat. Is he here? Where could I find him if I wanted to talk with him? Here? Being helpful? Yeah, as if, Saffron chuckled. Nah, he's probably showing off his shiny service medallion downtown, exactly the way our friends here aren't. She pointed at Randorf and the pink mare. Better for productivity, if you ask me. He'll be around sometime or other. Speaking of who we were speaking of, Pierre interrupted, Grandpapa is here, if you were hoping to find or avoid an encounter with him. Oh, bananas, he is? The lay's eyes widened. Ah, I mean, he's not gonna cause trouble, right? I'm not the biggest fan of getting monked up, and he's probably not going to get overconfident because I'm injured twice. Saffron bitter lip. 
I noticed that. You all right, Sugar Cube? Don't worry about him. He's being helpful. Yeah, I will be. Valet showed her shoulders, Gazelle scratches somewhat visible beneath her wet fur. Helpful, though? Really? Pierre coughed unscrupulously. Seeing as someone brought Lord Jaya to a tragic demise, he is the closest thing the Jaya delegation has to a leader. He has stepped up to fill the role. Valet winced again. Exactly how tragic is this demise we're talking about? <laughs> Saffron almost laughed. <laughs> there isn't no one who cared about Lord Jaya. All the other sphinxes are probably whistling and sweeping everything under the rug about him. I wouldn't worry a pretty little head about it, unless some vengeful expatriate shows up ticked you stole their kill. Nearby, Diego sighed. It's a shame the noble leaders of the Empire can sink to this. Not the reputation Wallace wishes they had. Yeah, Valley swallowed. Anyway, you have any idea where Grandpa is now then? I kind of would rather run into him on my own terms before he runs into me. I will find him, Randorf pledged, crossing his heart with a hoof, and then lumbering away. Valet blinked, watching in silence with her new companions for one minute, two, and then Randorf's very visible head stopped looking, and then cleared a path back for the crowd toward them, an older Sarosian in tow. Well, Valet, we meet again, Grandpapa said, watching her with an expression of complete neutrality. Hey there, old-timer, Valet returned, a hint of fret in her tone. So I got you out of the tournament, right? You're not gonna mess with me anymore? Grandpapa sighed. You've proven remarkably resilient to reason, my dear. But perhaps that's my fault for not speaking your language. You have good intentions here, trying to see to it that the tournament goes on? Valet glanced at everyone else. I mean, that's the plan. Good. Grandpapa nodded, pleased. I wish to talk with you if you will listen, but not now. You should continue helping your friends and building goodwill. You have a lot of eyes in you, and could still do much for the image of Cerosian kind. Valet blinked. I'm never gonna understand you, am I? That would be unfortunate, when you have a lot to learn. Grandpapa turned to leave. I will be here for quite some time. Please pay me a visit when you are done with more productive things. We have a tournament to save, after all. He disappeared into the crowd again, leaving Valet staring. Bananas! First he tries to kill me, then he tries to kill my friend, and now he's... Uh, she straightened up. Yeah, whatever. Hey guys, what's in that barrel from earlier? I don't know how much help I'm gonna be on the schedule stuff, but you all seem cool. Wanna hang out? A big grin spread across Saffron's face at the mention of the barrel. I was hoping someone would ask. End of chapter 759